for those of you who are first time viewers, this is a little weekly video discussion um, where I allow my viewers to pick the topic that we talk about and each week there's a new video posted on Sundays. This week we did a poll um, and I actually included a topic that was from a previous week that just had a lot of votes so I wanted to make sure that if people still wanted to hear about it they got the chance to. The topic is, I titled it The Company You Keep and I'm just going to cover a few different angles of relationships, friendship. So we're going to talk about the company you keep, and like I said by that, I mean like friendships and relationships that you have. Um, and I did make myself a little outline for this video just because I feel like it's a little different than the other two that I've done. The other two, um, my first one being the leg day exercises, it was kind of just like I didn't really have to think about it because I was showing you the exercises I wanted to and then I was just explaining them. Um, and then the second one was a recipe that I do and that one's kind of the same thing like I was just going through what you need to make the food and how you do it etc. Um, so I really just kind of didn't need to keep my train of thought on task because it was just easier to do it and I really get off task and forget what I'm saying all the time so it's probably going to happen even though I have this outline in my head or sorry on my um, laptop but I'm going to try so just bear with me. Um, okay, so basically what I wanted to share with you guys is, um, I well, I've recently started going, not really recently anymore, but a few months ago I started going to United <coughs> Church in Dover, and it really truly just made a huge difference in my life because it's just very uplifting, and you walk in there and you instantly just feel love, like, overflowing, um, and then the pastor there is great, Pastor Kenneth. Um, he just, he really knows how to reach people. He's a very good talker. So, I mean, usually he'll start like with joking around and just kind of relating Bible verses to your life. And then he really just dives in after he kind of gets your attention. And everything he says always really resonates with me. I take a lot out of the services. So, and I mean, if church isn't for you, then that's totally fine. I mean, this is not going to be really church focused. It's more um, kind of like a soul searching topic. Um, so actually before I even started going to United, I guess we'll start there because that's kind of where this whole idea popped into my head. Um, so before I started going to United, I was just in a state in my life where I wasn't really going to church anymore. Um, I just felt really lost in, my, in who I was and just in my life. And I wasn't really dealing with that feeling that I was experiencing. I was just kind of trying to avoid it in any way I could. Um, and I would just like just go out a lot, drink a lot, um, whatever it was, just to kind of avoid feeling what I was feeling. And it just came to the point where that became overwhelming because when I would go out and try to avoid it, I would end up at the end of the night feeling exactly what I felt before I started drinking or whatever it was that I was doing and it would that feeling would just be intensified and I would be then a feeling like I was alone in those feelings. So I actually had a conversation with um, kind of a friend of mine um, and he really just kind of gave me this insight that I hadn't really really uh, realized myself. And basically we just had a conversation about, you know, losing yourself and being surrounded by people who just aren't really necessarily bringing positivity into your life or helping you, you know, progress in your life. They're kind of just keeping you where you're at in, in that state that you are. Um, and what I mean by that is just people who aren't really necessarily there for you. They're just there to have a good time with you. And I think that that's something that we all really need to realize in our relationships is, are these people actually, you know, like here for me? Are they benefiting me? Do they care about where I'm going in life? Or do they just care about, you know, where we're going out next Friday night or this Friday night, whatever it is. So anyways, um, that's what kind of just sparked the whole idea of really paying attention to the company you keep. And then that followed by going to church and Pastor Kenneth just kind of talking about the importance in finding what he calls life-giving community. And 
when he said that, you know, just a few people just kind of popped in my head that I really felt like were my life-giving community. And then also a few people just popped in my head where I realized that, you know, we don't really have that deeper relationship because all our relationship relied on or still does rely on is just going out and having a good time and not ever really talking about anything in depth. You know, we're talking about what we saw on Snapchat, what we saw on Instagram, just things that don't, at the end of the day, really matter at all and aren't going to benefit my life, aren't going to change my life for worse or for better. So, um, yeah, just him talking about finding your life-giving community really resonated with me and I realized that, you know, in life you're going to make a lot of decisions that are going to affect the people around you and some people might not like it and it might hurt some people's feelings, but you really have to take a look at all your relationships and realize which ones are toxic for you and which ones are are bringing positivity or bringing goodness into your life. Um, and once you do identify those kind of just like toxic relationships where they don't necessarily care to hear how you're feeling, they don't care to hear about your goals, your interests, whatever it is, um, just start weeding out those toxic relationships. And I'm not saying that you have to turn your backs completely on these people. Um, but you do just need to start at least by recognizing the role that they have in your life, um, uh, whether it's significant, insignificant, or if it's somebody that you maybe once even thought to be your best friend, and now you're kind of taking a look at that relationship and seeing that maybe that relationship, maybe you guys do talk about deeper things, but maybe it's always all about them. Maybe there's never really a give and take. Maybe it's a hundred percent on your on your end that you're giving to this relationship and zero or 80 and well, I don't I can't even add right now but 80 80 and like 20 percent on their end that they're giving um whatever it is just you first identify those those relationships and then um if you do like start to realize that okay wow like you know we really don't have a deep relationship we just go out we just like I said talk about you know what's going on on social media um what events are going on in the world um just different things like that um you can you can make the decision then to make the effort to change that um you can still be there for them and try to influence them and just try to help them help themselves um so maybe you can just take yourself realizing where your relationship is at that point in time and take that and make it an opportunity to change that like I said so you can look at your relationship and you can just understand that neither of you have really contributed um, to bettering each other's lives and then make the effort to change that and what you can do is maybe just start asking them you know what's going on in your life um, what's what's really new do you have any new interests like are you thinking about a career change you know um, How's your relationship with your boyfriend? How's your relationship with your mom? Like just different things that you can ask them to just really reach out. And maybe that will make all the difference in the world to them because, you know, maybe they thought that you didn't care and they thought that you didn't have an interest in their life. And maybe they thought of you as someone who wasn't life-giving community. And you guys can both make that effort together to change that and start making time to do things together outside of going out with your friends and outside of, you know, whatever it is you guys usually do together. Maybe instead go get coffee one morning before work and talk about um, whatever it is you, you two are going through. Talk about, you know, if you have a career goal, talk about how you can take steps to, um, to get there. Um, bounce ideas off each other, you know, just different things rather than just making conversation to pass time at a bar or whatever it might be. Um, Okay, so, and then I wanted to talk to you guys about just some questions you can kind of ask yourself um, to really just identify what the role these people have, what the role is that these people have in your life. Um, so I kind of just came up with three questions, three like main questions, and there's little sub questions that you can ask yourself. Um, and obviously, my dogs are being crazy, sorry. Um, guys, get out. Obviously, you don't have to like, this isn't like an outline, like, for your life. You don't need to follow it step by step. Just kind of keep these questions in mind um, in your everyday life and then make changes as you feel needed from there. Um, so uh, how can you identify your life-giving community? 
All right, so the first question I wrote down is, do they bring positivity into your life and how? Do they make you feel good about yourself? Do they make you see all that there is to love about yourself? Or do they make you feel like, you know, like, hold on guys. Sorry, I had to kick my dogs out of the room because they're being insane. Um, where did I leave off? Um, okay, yeah, so do, like I said, are they just like kind of receptive to your goals or are they just like take it in and then that's the end of the conversation and you guys don't really talk about it anymore and you're left feeling like stupid or you're left feeling like maybe that's not the right thing for me because they didn't seem like they believed I could do it or they didn't seem interested, whatever it may be. Do they offer advice or constructive criticism um, to help get you closer to those goals? So like I said, kind of, is it just like you telling them what your goal is and then moving on to a different subject or are they like, okay, well, you know, I saw that you did this step to get to your goal and I thought maybe it would be better if you did it this way. Um, just different things like that. Just really contributing to that conversation rather than just taking what you say, saying okay, and moving on or twisting it into something about themselves. Um, and are they offering you a listening ear and actually listening? Because there's a difference between just sitting there and allowing you to speak and keeping their mouth shut and then actually sitting there and hearing what you're saying and taking in what you're saying and offering, you know, a response. Because I've definitely had relationships where I've just expressed something, whether it be about faith or, you know, um, working at the salon, anything. And, you know, I would tell them and they would just kind of be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Or yeah, that's a, that's, that's a nice idea. Like, and then the conversation will twist to them. Um, and that's, that's never a good feeling. Um, you always want to feel like what you're saying is important. And I'm just someone who really always wants to make everyone feel heard because I have been on the other side of that where I haven't felt heard and it sucks. And it's not something that you should be doing to your friends or that your friends should be doing to you. Um, and then the last little subsection of that question was, do they allow you to express your beliefs, your goals, interests? even if they aren't the same as their own. And that, to me, I feel is one of the most important because um, you don't necessarily have to have the same beliefs or the same goals or the same interests to maintain a friendship. Um, I think that you actually can take a lot from someone who is your complete opposite. Um, and it's, it's just kind of cool to be able to you know, say, I believe this, and then hear insight from somebody who might believe something a little different. Um, or even just learn about something that you may not know about. Like, say you have a friend who's interested in cars and you know nothing about cars, and if you just truly listen and give them time to tell you about that interest, then you're going to learn a lot from them, and you guys can then give and take from each other like a relationship, any relationship is supposed to. So, yeah, that's just something that I feel is super important because I... I just think it's good to maybe not necessarily always agree with each other, but just be honest with each other and say, you know, hey, I respect your opinion, but I don't have the same one, and be able to agree to disagree, and that's just going to make you a better person, both of you, and make your relationship stronger, because you know that you can be 100% honest with each other, and it's not going to destroy the relationship. Um, I need to work on my posture, I just noticed that, but... <laughs> Um, it's not going to destroy your guys' relationship and you're going to, maybe, yeah, you'll get mad at each other or a little upset because maybe they don't understand um, where you're coming from. But at the end of the day, you guys will move past it and you'll be better for it. Um, and then the, the last question I kind of just have on there is, do they make an effort to be present? In your life? Okay, do they make an effort to be present in your life? And obviously everyone is busy. Um, I know I have a million different things going on. I have work, the website, blog, the blog, um, making these videos. Um, I have to take care of my dogs. I have to babysit with my or help my mom babysit sometimes. Um, and then I have my social life as well. Like I, I still like to go out with my friends every now and then. Um, our family actually just started doing game night like once a month. Just different things and that consume my time. But I still do my best, I feel, at least to, you know, just reach out to my friends and make sure they're okay and try to make notes of what's going on in their life. And if I remember that, you know, they had 
they had a doctor's appointment or they had they just had um, an interview just different things like that I'll just reach out and say hey I remember this was going on how was it how did it turn out like are you doing okay do you need help with anything because yes everybody is busy but just taking a second to check in on someone is something that I believe all of us can do and I don't think there's really an excuse for you never reaching out to just make sure that someone is okay or just to say hey you know I love you I miss you something just just make that effort um so and with that do they say I'm here for you without ever truly meaning it and what I mean by that is are they someone who is always like you know they see you are going through a bad time and you made maybe you made a Facebook status a a tweet whatever it is um that was just kind of giving a little hint that you know hey I'm going through something and are they someone who will message you and say hey just just so you know I'm here for you but then maybe when you say you know what I could really use some company right now and I just don't want to be alone maybe can you come over or even just hear me out and listen to what I'm going through and then suddenly they flip a switch and it's like oh well I'm I, I really want to but I have all this going on like I don't really have time whatever it may be an excuse is an excuse um so, yeah, just, like, pay attention to that and figure out if there's someone who really means it when they say, I'm here for you, or if they're just saying, I'm here for you, so that they feel better about themselves, so they feel that, you know, they let you know that they were there, even though they really aren't there. Um, because I've, I've had friendships like that as well, and it doesn't make these people bad people. That's not at all what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say, like, people who don't make time for you are terrible people and you should stay clear I'm not saying that and sometimes you know people get lost in their own everyday lives or what they're struggling with and sometimes even then maybe you need to reach out to them even if you're going through something as well and be like hey you know this isn't like you to shut me out or this isn't like you to not be there so what's going on um so really just I guess the main point of oh god <laughs> The main point of me kind of just talking to you guys about this is because I feel like if you just sit back and kind of just analyze your relationships, then it can really make or break them. Um, and it can show you, you know, is this someone who I really need in my life? Is this someone who's really as important to me as I thought that they were? Or is this someone who's really never done anything but brought me down and steered me down the wrong path? Um, and even if they are someone like that, like I said, you... You don't have to shun them and completely take them out of your life. You just need to decide, um, you know, if it's someone that you can you can handle still being around. Oh, guys, sorry, I had a really good point that I wanted to tell you, and I can't remember exactly how I said it. Okay, so where I was going with that is, yes, it's important to think of others, and I kind of do that to a fault at times because I found myself in relationships where yeah, we only did talk about what they were going through and their issues and I was the only one helping them, but it wasn't necessarily their fault, it was mine because I was so resistant to telling people what was going on in my life because for whatever reason, I passed no judgment and I was totally okay and even encouraging for people to just come out and say what is going on with them, what, what's making you sad, what's making you depressed, what's making you anxious. But yeah, I was holding all of my stuff inside and not telling them and not, so I was expecting them to tell me all of their deepest, darkest secrets and I wasn't doing the same. Um, so I really had to just realize that me expressing that, yeah, I am sad or me expressing that, you know, I don't feel good about myself today doesn't make me weak and it doesn't make me a terrible person. Um, it just makes me human. Um, so where I was going with that is that yes, like I said, it's important to think of others and be there for anyone who just needs someone, um, but you also have to think about yourself. And if you aren't able to offer help to someone um, or just simply be there for them without allowing them to drag you down through their misery, drag you down the wrong path again, um, then you need to realize that you've kind of done all that you can and you've explored every option of how you can help them and it's still bringing you to a bad place and putting you in a bad situation or deterring you from your deterring you from your goals um and then you need to just remove yourself from that um and comfort yourself like I said in just knowing that you did all you could and they they just weren't willing to be accepting of your help or 
um, just weren't willing to listen or just weren't willing to make that effort to make themselves better. Um, and then all you can really do from there is pray for them if that's what you believe. And if not, then just, like I said, take comfort in knowing that you did your best. Um, and that at the end of the day, it's not your life and it's not your choice whether they get better or whether they do better for themselves, whether they progress in their future um, or whether they stay right where they're at and are complacent and just really never make the effort to make a better life for themselves. And that's just not something that you need in your life. Um, so I hope that you guys understand that all I'm trying to say is that you need to take a look at basically the world around you. Take a look at your friendships, take a look at your relationships and decide, you know, how, how much good are, is, are they really bringing to your life? And um, and just kind of take a look at, you know, how your guys' relationship has been. Like I said before, do do you guys um, benefit each other's lives? You know, do you, is it a give and take or is it just you giving and them taking all the time? Just keep those questions in mind and you can go back in this video and watch and just kind of sit there and lay it all out for yourselves and realize who is really there for you and who isn't. And like I said, it's not... There's not saying that you can't keep those people in your lives and you can't still love those people. You can. You can hang out with them still, um, but just be able to know the difference in who is really there for you and who's good for you and who's just someone who you can't really talk to and you can't really share things with, and that might be okay, but you can still associate with them. You can still, um, you know, check in on them if you want. Um, you can still go out with them, whatever it is. Um, but just like I said, be able to distinguish between a true friend and just someone who is a good time. Um, so I hope that this, um, this helped you guys and maybe gave you a little bit of, you know, a revelation about just where you are in life and who you need to keep around and who's really there for you. Um, and even if it didn't, maybe, maybe you don't have anybody that's really bad for you in your life. Um. And maybe this video just made you kind of realize all the great people you have in your life. And if that's the case, then I'm so happy for you. And, you know, that's the goal. That's that's what you want in life. And if you're already there, then kudos to you. Um, but some of us still aren't and some of us are still struggling. And that's okay. Um, so I just really wanted to kind of just share that insight and go back to kind of what Pastor Ken said and just really let you guys know that life-giving community is so important and it can really truly just make all the difference in the world in your life um so just keep that in mind and um thank you guys for watching i'm sure there's like craziness in this video and i'm i'm, I'm sorry um <laughs> i'm still trying to get used to everything and i really just want to be super natural with the videos like i don't want it to be scripted or sound forced um so if i'm not making a ton of sense i'm really sorry but i'm trying to get my points across clear um, and I'm trying to stay focused, which is why I made the outline today, because that, that actually did help a little bit um, to just kind of rewind and get me back on the right path to what I was actually trying to say to you guys, because it's so easy for me to forget. Um, so I'm going, and I just said um a million times again, I'm sorry guys, but I'm going to post another poll to Instagram today and to um, Facebook. Oh my gosh, I just said um again. So uh, be looking out for the four new topics that you guys can choose from. And then just please, please, please vote. I know, I realize that everybody can't really comment on these videos because you probably don't have a YouTube account because I didn't before I needed one. If you can't comment on the video or whatnot, just please make sure that you're voting because I really, like I said before, want to get your guys' opinions and what you guys actually want to hear about. I don't want to be doing videos that nobody cares about. I want it to be something that you guys look forward to and want to listen to So, and find that they benefit your life. Uh, in whatever way it is. So, like I said, I'm going to be posting four new topics. So, if you have Instagram, vote on Instagram. If you have Facebook, vote on Facebook. Please only choose uh, one because I, I have to split it in. I, I'm not sure about Facebook, but I know on Instagram I have to split it because you can only do two options for a poll. So, I'll be doing two posts on my story on Instagram uh, for the options. So, just only choose one of the four. And then um, I'll be announcing what the winning topic was either Monday or Tuesday and you guys will have another video the following Sunday. So just please, like I said, make sure you vote and thank you guys so much for watching and being patient with me through learning, you know, just how to get better at this. 
and I do have some changes that are going to be coming soon. I've ordered a couple new things for equipment, so I'm not sure when they'll be in, but I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on making everything better for you guys. Uh, I might be actually redoing my website a little bit, just because some people have expressed that it's not as clear, I guess, that there's different tabs and that there's different sections of the website rather than just the home page. So I'm going to try to tweak that a little bit for you guys and make it a little bit easier. And like I said before, if there's any suggestions you guys have for me, just let me know. Um, and I hope you guys have a great week. How fickle.